Hey y'all, this video is pretty long and there's a lot of information here. I put chapters below so that you can just skip around if you only want to find little bits and pieces of information on whatever topic it might be that you're looking for. I have personally helped teach a number of fairly new Phasma players, including my son <laughs> and some of his friends. It finally dawned on me that uh, as I was doing it again for my friend uh, Dark God, I'll put a link to uh, his Twitch below. Feel free to check him out. But as I was walking through all these details with him again, uh, it occurred to me that, uh, yeah, maybe maybe uh, I should put this on YouTube. So again, this is squarely aimed at beginners. If you already know me from doing my zero evidence, zero sanity runs, that's going to be covered in a later video. But as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Feel free to ask me while I'm streaming live on Twitch. One of the most common things that I hear from new Phasmophobia players is that the game just feels so random. Believe me when I tell you, I can completely understand why you might feel that way. Trust me, the game is a lot less random than you think. Because I hear so many people say, including people who I've who, who I've recently helped, who are like, the game just feels random. As far as I can yeah. tell, I'm doing everything right, and we still get it wrong. And my that, response that to was, that is, there is if you're if that's your experience, that usually means there's some sort of mechanic, there's some sort of fundamental that you're not realizing, or somebody um, or somebody's true. yeah, or somebody is misinterpreting. Well, and that's, that's what, just what they're it. getting. I'm not sure. Maybe like you know. So like with temperatures and things, I'm sure there's a threshold where freezing temperatures, you know, should be obviously freezing. And it, you would think that means anything below zero. And sometimes we do that and it turns out that it wasn't freezing, even though we, the, the, temp, the thermometer seemed to have registered below zero. Right. Things like that, where stuff seems like it's got goofed up for some reason. And you're like, well, we either read it wrong or something, you know. Yep. I'm purposefully going to over explain things that you may already yeah, yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, but it's, yeah. Like I, my, the main takeaway that I want you to get, go ahead, hit the ready up button when, uh, whenever, whenever you're ready. Yeah, the main, I'm checking my, I have to have push the talk on for the game, right? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Make sure it's on. So that's actually the first thing that I'd that I'd tell people is like, there's a setting that you you can you can have to where your mic is always on, and in my opinion, that's just a bad idea. Yeah, because it can hear you. Because it can hear you, and if you're in a hiding spot, and then maybe it's not even your fault of your own, just your mic just happened to pick up, like you know, your your brother, or your sister, like closing yeah, a door. Yeah, fan. <laughs> yeah, or or you just happen to breathe into the microphone a little too yeah. hard, right? Yeah, so that's usually the first thing I tell people is, is is get used to push to talk. Don't don't leave a hot mic. It's just a bad idea. As far as the other bits, let's go ahead and get into the house and then I can show show you a few things here. I guess I guess I'll start here. Well, let's talk about event. I'll talk a little bit about events versus hunts. Um, the reason why you saw me having trouble uh, that one night from from a while back um, was because I'd actually screwed up my settings. Um, I had accidentally set the grace period to zero. Which means, right. which means there was no grace period. The ghost just started hunting, and wherever right. it was, was where it was. Um, but now, even on zero zero, I have it set to two. So what that means is, if the ghost initiates a hunt, you you will hear it before you see it, and you should have okay. two full seconds in order in order to react to the ghost doing that. Mm. And it's sim similar to hunt. And uh, this is why, I like, I, I know you don't do this, but I know some people play on speakers. Sound sound is critical because the sound <laughs> tells you the sound tells you where the ghost is starting. So, Could you so imagine playing hunt on speakers. Uh, I I no, <laughs> <laughs> no. So so the bottom line is so the bottom line. Is, let, let's just say you're walking through this hallway, and you see the ghost like right here at the same time that you hear it. It's probably probably just an event, not a hunt. Okay, so the hunt should always give you the forewarning. The event will not necessarily do that. The okay. event can, the, the event can be immediate. The hunt again, as long as I don't screw up my settings. The well, hunt. Well, and so this yeah. is based on your custom difficulty, uh, right? So, well, yeah, well, I mean, like right now we're in the house and it's amateur, and again, I, I have the ghost set to friendly just so that we can wander the house and not have right, to be but interrupted. Like if you were doing this normally, like say you were just setting it to like not doing any custom settings, but just put it on like the normal, the the average difficulty. Mm -hmm. Would that be the way that that is in that setting by you yes. know, where you would get the forewarning? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's the, that's, I, that's kind of the default of how the game is structured. Yeah. Yeah. By default, okay. you should have at least a second or two to react to the okay. to the to the hunt actually starting. Let's talk a little bit about about survival. Okay. Usually, when when people tell me yes, yeah, throwing ship, 
Um, so usually when people tell me that, that they're dying all the time, it's like, okay, so here, here are the things that tend to kill people the most. We already talked about having the mic always on, switching that to push to talk. We talked about that already. Um, the other thing that tends to get people killed is they'll go in a hiding spot, but then they leave their flashlight on. <laughs> the, the ghost knows that you have your flashlight on. Um, another thing, like, 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 like um, but the thing is that works with all electronics. Like, if you have an EMF reader, and let's just say you switch to something else, um, your EMF reader is still on. The ghost still can still sense it. Okay. So that's yeah. the other thing. That's the other thing that tends to get most mo most newer newer players killed is they have electronics on and they're in the hiding spot. The ghost can sense the electronics. There is one ghost that can't, and that's a tell. But I'll get to that later. But number three is they don't understand how the hunt mechanics actually work. Um, in order to successfully hide from a ghost, and I've heard this phrase uh, a number of different ways, so I'll, I'll phrase both. Uh, some people will say you have to break line of sight twice. The way that uh, that I tend to describe it is you have to break line of sight before you hide. So what that means is, okay, right, is right. let's just say, okay, so, so st stand right here. Yep. Okay, so let's just say I'm the ghost and I start a hunt from right here. You're standing right there. If you go in that closet right there, you're dead. Yeah, because it obviously knew. Because the ghost was, saw you. Know. you yeah, the ghost saw you enter. So therefore, if you're right here, your better move is to duck around here, right around the corner. And so once you go around here, if the ghost is in there, it now can no longer see you, and now you can safely get into the hiding spot, and you're good. Now here's a question: um, uh -huh. How how often is it that, like, say, the ghost was hunting and you knew that, but they were in a different room initially? If you hide and you have everything shut off. Can the ghost still find you? There is one ghost that still can. There Just is one. There is one in general, ghost. The ghost yes. cannot. Okay. Yeah. So in, in, yeah. So in general, as long as you make, as long as okay, hunt starts. I, I, you know, I know I'm safely hiding. As long as you do that, you're fine. And like I said, a little bit later, I'll go over what makes a good hiding spot and what doesn't. Let's say the one ghost that you, that, you, that you need to be aware of that can break that rule is called the Diogen. Um, so anytime that, that 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 we enter the house and the Dio is on the table, uh, you, you, you just have to understand that the Dio is, is the one ghost that it doesn't matter if your electronics are on or off. The Dio knows where you are at all times, period. Uh, you can loop it. Yeah, you can loop it all day. It is, it, it, it is the easiest ghost to loop. The tell for the Diogen is it is really fast when it's super far away from you. When it gets close to you, roughly about as far apart as we are now, it mm -hmm. becomes the slowest ghost. Like, laugh out loud, comically slow. Okay. All you do is you come into, into like a room like this. Like, the only place you can really loop in here, in, like kitchen. in this house, is here. Yeah. And you can literally, you don't even have to use sprint to, 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 um, to loop a Dio. You can literally just walk around casually, and the ghost will literally never catch you. But if you try to hide from it, you're dead. Well, actually, no, that's not true. I just lied to you. You can actually, you can, I think you can loop in the garage, too. Let me see. Yeah, so you can oh, loop in the garage. Yeah, the yeah so you can loop in here too. So if we are playing and you know that the Diogen is still in play and you you haven't heard the ghost hunt yet, then you may you may want to consider getting out of your hiding spot if you suddenly hear it slow down when it's close to you. I got you because it's probably found you and it's going to come kill you. Exactly, because that means it's it's gotcha. gotten to within a very short range and now it it will kill you if you don't get out of your hiding spot. With all that out of the way, what makes a good hiding spot? So. You've seen me play a few times, and you've seen me do the one the one door open. Oh, it just touched the door. So you, you've seen you've seen me do this. I, I do this because this configuration is the easiest way to not accidentally kill your teammates. Because it means there's always a path in, and as long as you are tucked against the wall, the opposite wall, the ghost can't see you there. You are perfectly safe right there. Now the other thing that I that I will throw in that you will notice that may not be so obvious is once I do this, I typically grab the door. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I grab the door and I hold it shut. I just hold down my left mouse button. That way, if the okay. ghost happens to pass by while it's hunting and it wants to screw with the door and open it, which it will do. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but if I'm holding it shut, it won't do that. And that being said, it, yeah, I mean, keep an eye on it. It doesn't matter if the it doesn't matter if your character model is clipping through the, the doesn't door matter. because you're holding it. Doesn't it. matter. As long as long as you are physically tucked in, you are perfectly safe. These closets are probably the most reliable hiding spots in the game. Okay. I'm going to show you some other spots now. Because there there are some things think that, uh, ghosts there, would know to look yeah, in the there are some things that that don't look very obvious. So like back here, so there, so there's a closet right here, obviously. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this closet is blocked. If you're in a pinch, you can get up against this blocked closet, pull the doors as shut as you possibly can, 
And I'm not saying that you will never get killed like this, but if you're in a pinch <laughs> and you don't have any options, sometimes that works. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's no there's no hiding in there. Okay, here here's the first spot that you may not know is a spot. Behind this crib, crouched is actually a hiding spot. Okay, yeah. Well, that makes yeah. sense because it's kind of yeah. blocked from everything unless this stands yeah. right here. Okay. Now keep in mind, um, too, one of the things that I told you earlier, not every hiding spot is 100% safe. Some are more safe than others. Um, right. I personally have never been killed in this spot, but I don't think it's totally safe. So just keep that in mind. I think it's one of those things to where you might get unlucky and the ghost might wander up. Oh, it just turned the it just turned the TV on. Uh, hiding spots in here. Let's take a look at. Cut it off, Casper. Hello. Oh, there oh. It is. hey, oh, yeah. ghosty. How you doing? Uh, there's no hiding in here. Like, I put it this way: if if you had like no safe spot, like let's just say for whatever reason you got caught here, you could try running in, closing the door, and maybe tucking yourself in behind here. And but hope if, to God it doesn't open the door. Yeah, but if the ghost comes in here, you're you're, you're dead. <clears throat> Which it appears to be, since it's throwing shoes it, around it, with the it, door closed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is its room. Um, in here, there's no real spots. Let's go check out the rest of the house. This is the reason why I turned it to friendly ghosts, because I just didn't want to be dealing with all the stuff. Well, sure, you know, because, uh, yeah. wandering around, we'd die within minutes, or yeah. I would, and you'd be playing hide-and-seek for the rest of the time, trying to yep. dictate to me what you're doing. Yep. Now, you do have to check, because sometimes these hiding spots are blocked, depending on difficulty settings. Okay. Um. Now, can you, you can get in the locker and close the door? Yep. Oh, oh ghost event. <sighs> Yeah, oh, so, yeah, so yeah, so you can get in there, close the door, and again, those are pretty reliable. There is something that I will mention that, that, I, that I kind of forgot to mention earlier. Especially when you start getting into the upper difficulties and the ghosts get more aggro, mm -hmm. sometimes the ghost will event on you and then immediately trigger a hunt. Sometimes, no, no. sometimes this can cause you to die in a hiding spot if you're not paying attention and you're not being careful. <laughs> I, I, I and this is one of the things that, that that I had to teach to my kid because he he, he was one of those because uh, like especially when he first started playing he was a little scared, so he you know he'd be, you know so like so he go like hide in there and then like the ghost would, would sometimes kill him. It's like you need to understand like just staying in a hiding spot not always the safest thing to do. Okay, let's go to the basement because there is a spot down here we can show you. Uh, ba -ba 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 here, behind the, behind this wood thing, right here. This is the spot. Oh yeah, dark corners. That's the spot. Yeah, I mean the bottom line is, is like sometimes you know, look if you end up in a desperation play, just as a general rule, just try to get to the back of the room, crouch and just like shove yourself against a wall. Make sure your electronics are off and just hope that the ghost doesn't come back there. It may not. And by the way, okay. I can't tell you how many times I've literally just sat behind behind this counter right here, crouched. And this actually can get things done. If you crouch behind this with your electronics off, you'd be surprised how often you can hide from the ghost. And trust me when I say, like, once I go through a few maps and show you all the hiding spots, you can then pretty much take those general principles and um, and just and just apply them to everything. My favorite spot to loot the ghost in here is uh, that spot. Oh, I'm glad you did that. That reminds me. You want to know what the biggest indicator of a hunt actually starting is? The door closing. Yeah. That front door slamming. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There's only I one. It didn't there in this there case, is but... one ghost that can shut that door outside of a hunt or a or an event, and it, it's a tell. Ooh. That's for, that, that's the Yuri. The Yuri is the gotcha. only ghost that can that, that can touch the front door outside of an event or a okay. hunt. Uh, there's not really any good hiding in here. Um, I'm trying to think. There might be a spot in here. This this. Th okay, remember how I told you some spots are less safe yeah, than others? Like behind the washroom. This yeah. this is a desperation spot. If you if, if if you're being chased and you don't have a better option, just go for it. Oh, uh, another thing that that, that I, I might have forgot to mention when when, uh, when the ghost is hunting, when you break line of sight, the ghost is going to travel to the point where it last saw you. It's going okay. to continue. It's not just going to be like, oh, where did they go? Turn around. It's going to continue. How, how often does a ghost change targets? Um. So like on a hunt, say that I saw it in the hallway, right? And I break a line of sight and come in here, and you're in this room, but I dodge into a hiding spot, and you're standing there. Is it going to come for you? I don't have the best idea of how a ghost chooses to obtain or change targets. I can say that there is one ghost, the Banshee. The Banshee, at, at the start, will choose its target. It, okay. choo it chooses one person. And as long as that person is in the house, it will only go after that person. The other people can wander the house freely with no consequences. It will not touch them 
as yeah. long as that person is in the house. You're, you're basically it's a perceived fun victim, and uh -huh. uh, it will, and it's uh, gonna go after you and only you. Gotcha. So there you go. You got some lockers right there. This is and one of the another, breaker locations. That's another tell for the ghost too, right? That is one of the tells, correct. Um, okay. Yeah, but the Banshee is the only one like that. The Banshee, by the way, is also the only one where average sanity doesn't matter. Only the sanity of its intended target matters. Oh, okay. Right. So if the target sanity is high, it's going to be less aggressive. And Correct. Gotcha. Okay, so as you can see, there's okay. more lockers down here. Yep. Uh, back here, let me see if I can remember. Um... Uh, kind of similar like, again like yeah, one of this, those little yeah like this is yeah, this yeah. isn't the best spot but if it's all you got it's all yeah, you this got this isn't open, this yeah. this yeah. isn't the worst either oh look a pentagram yeah mm. okay so the very that's first time up. they added that to the game I was playing with uh I think it was one of my boys and they were like no oh, what happens if you like that <laughs> <laughs> fun fun happens yeah, yeah, it was good. Fun happens. So as you can see, like there's Upstairs a closet. I yeah. love this closet. Absolutely love this closet. I will warn you, the sound in this game can be a little wonky around this stairwell. If the ghost decides to start a hunt on this stairwell, uh -huh. you may not you may not have a good idea what floor the the, the hunt's starting on. I'm just warning you. It's well, got it's, it's just, got me uh, killed more than once. Well, you know, it's uh it's no hunt. Yep. Yeah. Okay, there's no real hiding in there. Uh, nothing really in there. Yeah, this one doesn't have much in here either. Well, there's yeah. a little bathroom. Yeah, but, but yeah, but look, you're starting to get an idea of what what's going to work and what isn't. So yeah. good. That, that that was the whole idea of this exercise. Yep. Well, and it's funny because like like I said, we really never even bothered with the hunt. Like people would run and just go to different rooms and like shut doors and stuff, and nobody would ever yeah. really think it through too much. Like, oh, I'm just gonna throw myself in the closet and close it, and you know, it doesn't. No one would think to turn off the electronics. Flashlights, yes. I think people mostly got the concept that, hey, flashlights need to be off. And Yeah, but it's all electronics. But, Anything electronic yeah. needs to be off. That's um, going to take some getting yeah, used there's to. Some, because, uh, there is hiding yeah. in there. Right there. Um, let's oh, yeah. see. I think there. I think there's hiding in the master bedroom, too. Yep, there is. There's a couple closets in here. Mm, I don't think you can get back here. I'll put it this way. I have hid behind toilets <laughs> in a jam, and I have had it work. I, I've also been killed, but I've had it work. Don't don't knock over the plunger. You'll be yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, I believe that pretty much sums up Edgefield. The only other thing that I will share, anytime you have a stairwell like this, be careful of, of like, let's just say you know the ghost is hunting upstairs. Don't stay too close to this wall. I have seen some cases where the ghost will actually get you through the wall. Yeah, like clip you. Yeah, because it clips through for for whatever reason. But that seems to be a only stairwell thing. I, like, like again, like I, I've I, I haven't been killed through the front door. Ridgeview is kind of the same concepts. I don't th I don't think I'm going to show you anything new there. I am going to load up the farmhouse though because there's a couple of spots I want to show you there. Grafton okay. Farmhouse. Yep. So I'll show you a few spots in this, and then like I said, really after this, you should have a pretty good idea of of well. Okay, so I guess the other thing would be maybe some more of the advanced tools. Yes, yeah, because, I, I, that, that's what we're going to do next. Once we yeah. go through all the hunting spots, then I'm going to come back in here yeah. and I'm going to start getting things. And keep in mind, like, all the tools are going to change with the next update, but... Oh, really? Yeah, well... They've got another update coming out they with... Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big update where they're they're revamping a lot. When is that um, due out? Gonna be, uh, later this year. They're, they're basically... Okay. The gear is all gonna have different tiers that you're gonna have that you can pay to upgrade, and there's gonna be a prestige system. And basically, as you oh, work through, it. you unlock higher tier stuff, etc. Okay, so right away, let me show you this spot. This spot okay. right here, I'm telling you right now, this will fool you. This might look safe, but I'm telling you right now, I have died in this spot multiple times, and I'll tell well, you a few reasons right why I think why. Stairs, right? Yeah, because you're right here, so I think the ghost can actually sometimes like see you from here. Well, yeah. So, like, so all I'm gonna say is, if you find yourself in a spot where you absolutely have to use this spot, shove your nose as far into this bookshelf right here as you possibly can. I have hidden there many times, and it's been totally fine. But I have absolutely been killed there multiple, multiple times. Now I'll show you. If, there's a few things you can do on this one. That's that's a little bit bigger. If you got a loop a ghost, or you have to lose a ghost, so you can you have a kitchen island, which works right. just kind of like the one in the other one, right? But you can also do, if it comes down to it, you can actually loop the ghost through the entire first floor. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Just got the circle. Yep. Yeah. So so if so if you know you haven't broken line of sight, just change a couple of the rooms, and you might actually lose it. 
go look for some more spots here. Uh, this is one of the breaker locations right here. This Ooh. is one of the spots that looks really sketch. I have never been killed here, but I it is still technically possible. If the ghost just happens to choose to walk here, then you're yeah, dead. The mattress walks yeah, from that, the door. But so, that being said, okay. again, I have never been killed here. So... Well, you I, know, there'll be a first time for There may be a first. Together, there may be a true. first. But, uh, okay, let's go check out the rest of the house. Um, this is another loop spot, but it's a little more cumbersome because there's a lot of shit you can get hung up on. Yep. There's another really good hiding spot that's usually in this closet right here. Right back here. Uh, okay. This is another really good spot. I like this yep, spot a lot. Behind the boxes. Yeah, that spot's pretty freaking solid. Uh, let's look in here. You can try... Yep, pick it up. That's free money. Behind here is... Like, this is one of those, oh shit, I'm in a pinch spots. Mm -hmm. um, because again, the ghost can, can keep... Oh, okay, th these boxes are here. These boxes are not always here. Again, if you're saying, oh shit, there's, wor there's worse spots you can be. You follow me? Yep, yep. Alright, let's go... Check out the room across the hall. Um, not really good hiding spots in here. Back here is not the worst. It's not the worst, not the best. Mr. Bun. Mr. Bunny. All right, I'll show you. Now I'm going to walk you upstairs. I'm going to show you a couple of hiding spots that you're going to look at. And you're going to be like, seriously, that's a spot? And I'll be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me show you the upstairs. Wait, where's the light? There we go. Okay. See that chair? This yes. is this is legitimately one of the best hiding spots in the game. I'm really not kidding. <laughs> I'm real. I'm really not kidding. I really okay. wish. I <laughs> just make sure you're crouched. <laughs> yeah, leather, leather leather couch. There you go. All okay. Right. Are you ready to see? Okay, and I'll show you one more not obvious spot. And then once you understand this, you, again, you can take this to any map and have a, 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 a better idea. See that crib? Yep. This actually works. <laughs> okay, that one shouldn't work. <laughs> Does it look like it should? Yeah, that one you wouldn't work. think. Okay. You uh, wouldn't think, but it works. The uh, the asset store must have uh, yeah. must be taller than. Basically, the, the ghost has to just building. intentionally walk into this corner of the room in order to see you, which. I think can technically happen, but that does that is a legit hiding spot. Hilarious. There we go. Okay, so that pretty much I think covers everything that you need to know for for hiding as far as what's legit, what's not legit. You know, like like hey, what's a really good spot versus okay, if I don't have any other options, I'm going to that spot. Oh yeah, and that one that one in there is not one I would ever have thought of. Because I it's, never would it's have either. Total, totally jank. So. Yep. Until I watched someone else do it, and I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" And then they lived. I was like, "Okay, <laughs> it's a spot." So let's talk about the gear for a second here. My biggest pain points with the gear have always been with the the crucifixes and whether or not they work correctly as far as how I would perceive them to work. And like the Perfect. smudge stick, I can easily so those, show this. <coughs> yeah, I those, can those easily are the ones show this. That are the toughest because. <coughs> Let's start with the crucifix. Okay. Let me come here. Actually, grab the other one. Gra grab the other one. Okay. Got it. So, if you are holding a crucifix in your hand, the ghost mm -hmm. will not be able to hunt within. I think. Shoot, I can't remember the exact number. Is either seven or, I think normal ghost is seven meters. I think demon is nine. I think. Okay. Um, as long as it's in your hand. But let me show you something, because they actually just recently added this in. So check this out. Crouch down, okay. press and hold F, and look at the ground. Oh, okay, it gives you a circle. You see the circle? That yeah, is that, that is definitely the definitely did not used to be. Yeah, there. that is the amount of area that that crucifix will cover. And if it happens to be a demon, it's bigger. So you could immediately tell if it's a demon by just grabbing the crucifix and trying to place it. Um. A demon. <laughs> will, the, will, the, not will the game show the circle larger? So there <laughs> is. Oh, so here. So here's the fun part. There are actually a couple of maps where, depending on where the ghost room is, a demon can actually trigger the crucifix while it's still in the truck. <laughs> okay. Because the range is is that big. Uh, okay, and so, okay. so if you ever see a crucifix Where's... burn in the truck, you should immediately you know think demon. demon. <laughs> and then just, just hit the button and take off. All right. Probably. Yeah. 
I, I don't know if other, if if other if other ghosts can do it, but I do know that that is a demon thing. All right. Because of the range, so that's the way to tell. And again, all this does is prevent the ghost from hunting up to two times. Um, from you know, in this little circle, the, this circle area. That's how the crucifix works. Okay. It, now, if I'm holding it, yes, then and the ghost comes near me. If it tries to hunt, it will burn the crucifix in your hand. What if it's already hunting and then it comes to me? It has no effect. So the crucifix will not stop a ghost. It does that's absolutely hunting. nothing to a ghost okay. that is already engaged hunt mode. Okay, so it's not a safety thing at no. all, basically. No, not at all. Demonologist okay. is different. Demonologist well, is completely different. I don't know anything different. about demonologists. Yeah. I'm just saying. So, I'm like, just warning I you. I think yeah. that was one of the perceptions was that if you have the crucifix and the ghost starts hunting, it would, you know, it, oh, okay, I could just stay and hold this little burn the crucifix instead of killing me. That's not the case. As that long, is not you know. the case. Nope. Once okay. once the ghost has engaged a hunt, the crucifix does nothing. Now Covers the, the smudge stick, on the other hand, does that? The smudge stick it do, it does probably what you thought the crucifix did do, but so um, you I, can I, light it and the ghost cannot kill yeah, you. Is so, that the way? Correct. It? When 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 you light the smudge stick, the ghost becomes blind to all players for six seconds, unless it's a maroi. If it's a maroi, it will be blind for twelve seconds. Okay. But for but but the but the bottom line is like I said, once you light a smudge, you have six seconds to get to a hiding spot before before the ghost will see you. Just kill the person. Okay. Yeah, your smudge it's, sticks it's, are are limited resources, so you don't, especially when you get into the higher difficulties where you kind of need to rely on what the ghost is doing to get data. Like you don't want to burn them needlessly. Right. You, you know, obviously, like look, if you're getting hunted and you have to save your ass, then yeah, burn it. Right. But it, but it's important to say like just because you have a smudge stick, I don't especially in the higher difficulties. Smudge sticks are ways to get information, so you don't want to burn them recklessly, because right, uh, and I've seen you do that on the yep. more recent streams. So, I mean that's yep. you know I, that yep. I get. But now I just that was a, the biggest that was a misconception that I had about how the smudge mm -hmm. worked versus the crucifix. So that's good yep. to know. Yep. So there you go. So we got that straightened out. Brief away a thermometer. I don't know the exact the exact distance the most reliable way that i've found to get readings is to walk into a room and point it near the floor okay i think it's, it's supposed to work in a cone i i feel like i get really strange readings when i'm standing in one room and pointing it towards another room so the most reliable way is like so that's why usually you'll see on stream when i walk in i'm 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 aiming down usually okay. to get to get readings Usually, here, we, we, let's actually use this as, as an exercise. Obviously, you'll get freezing temps. Okay, let's see. Oh, it jumped up a little bit. No, wait. I got 1.8. It's it's pretty cold in here, and it just... go. Oh, okay. I can turn the light off. That's fine. Um, let's check in here. Okay, so check this out. So, so yeah. See the temperature in here? See how it's much higher? Cool. Now step into this room and aim it kind of at the floor. See how the temperature drops yep. dramatically? Almost, as, almost to freezing. Yep. This is the ghost's favorite room right here. Now, wait. So you, in higher difficulties, you cannot get freezing temperatures? It will not you? give you freezing temps. You won't ever get it. Interesting. Um, okay. um, well, hold on. Okay, here, here, here's Hold on. I think I can explain that a little better. Once you reach nightmare mode, under normal circumstances, a ghost will give you three evidences. Once you hit nightmare, one of those evidences will be hidden. Now, in insanity mode, two of those evidences will be hidden, which means you're only ever going to get one. On zero evidence, you will literally get none. On the difficulty that I play at, zero <laughs> evidence, zero sanity, I will never get freezing temps, period. Well, so, so you won't get any of the evidence points then, right? You won't get anything. So, so you can't get, like, fingerprints, you can't get EMF reads? There's one exception. There's okay. one exception, and it's ghost orbs. And that's because okay. Ghost Orbs is tied to the Mimic. A lot of the higher level gameplay revolves around you having played enough to know like what's normal throwing, what's abnormal gotcha. throwing. Gotcha. You know, what's okay. a, you know, you know, what's a normal blink rate? Because a ghost, you know, blinks in and out, right? What's right. A, what's a normal blink rate? What's what is an unusual blink rate? What what's normal speed for a ghost? What's what's slower? What's faster? Right. Unless you play the game a lot, you have no concept of what that means. So the one ghost that will give you evidence, even though it's a zero evidence, zero sanity run, is the mimic. Okay. The mimic, and this and this is a golden rule across all difficulties. If you see ghost orbs, mimic is in play. Period. Regardless of what, regardless of what your book tells you, if you see ghost orbs, mimic is in play. Period. Okay. And there's ways of telling. Let's just see. Are we gonna get lucky? Do we have them here? Well, well, you've seen ghost orbs before, right? 
Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so you know what they look like. Yeah, Let's I mean, I've played enough of this at a yeah. basic level that yeah. I know. So oh, you will see me. Yeah, it's thrown quite a few things, actually. Um, so yeah, so you will. So like checking for ghost orbs is still a useful thing to do, uh, even on zero zero, because because you can get mimicked. And let me tell you something: on zero zero, you if you want to shit your pants, wait until you have a mimic that changes from a normal speed ghost to suddenly it's a deogen and you're in a hiding spot that you can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> the mimic will not change what ghost it is mid hunt but it has a good chance of changing what ghost it is between hunts. Let's talk about the spirit box first. So, obviously, now it's on. You can hear that it's on. Okay, so you notice... Hold on. I think I can actually drop on the table and you can see it, too. Yep. There we go. Perfect. Okay, let's see. Hold on. Um, I like over like... Let's see. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. How old are you? Are you here? Do you want to hurt us? Okay, you saw, you saw the X lit up? Uh, well, your face is blocking part oh, of it. Oh, okay, uh, here. That part. Okay, so, how old are you? Are you here? Are you close? Are you far? Did you see, you saw how the X's were lighting up? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so, when you ask the spirit box, hold on. When you ask the spirit box a valid question that the ghost can answer, the X will show up, and all and all that lets you know okay. is is you is that you you gave a correct input, and the ghost is declining to answer. That's I what that, that's what that means. If the ghost chooses to answer, then the um then the little ghost icon, which is right next to to the X, the ghost icon will light up. That's how you know you've asked a correct question, now, and the ghost did answer. If you ask a correct question, and the ghost does not answer, that is not spirit box evidence, right? Correct. Just because the ghost declines to answer does not you have the ghost the, has the to ghost answer has to on answer. it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. And you'll usually hear it. Sometimes it's kind of soft, but you'll yeah. you'll usually hear it. And I the, assume yeah. that was the case. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't one of those things where oh no, as long as you ask a valid question, therefore it's spirit box. You know, so that's that's nope. good. I just want to confirm yep. that. Yeah. Oh yeah. The X the X is there as an indication to you, the player, that you did indeed ask a okay. valid question and that it got registered and the ghost is declining to answer. Oh, there's the misball event. Oh. Again. So again, it can't be an Oni. <laughs> okay, but that's that's how the spirit box works. Another thing to mention about the spirit box, the range for it is actually really short. It's only like two meters. So it's only oh. gonna answer you if if you're right on top of it. So that's why like you'll you'll notice sometimes like I'll walk around with the lights on. Sometimes I turn the lights off. I think actually maybe it might only work with the lights off. I forget. But um, because again, it's been so long since I play with evidence. But the bottom line is, is like you like you'll see me when I'm when, like um, if I ever use a spirit box, I'm walking around the room. I'm not holding still. And the reason be being is because the ghost is wandering. The ghost is moving. It might not even gotcha. be in the room. It might have wandered out of the room. So, so in other words, that's just a very hard evidence to grab. So it's eh, it's not the most difficult, but it but it but just understand that just because you have a ghost that's declining to answer doesn't necessarily mean it won't give you spirit box. It just might mean that the ghost isn't by you at right that second. Nas projector. Yes. Pretty this straightforward. Pretty straightforward, right? So the only thing that I will mention about this is there's one ghost. Oh Jesus! Hi there. <laughs> Uh, there, there, yeah, there is one ghost that will not give you the dots evidence unless you are observing it from outside of the room. Okay. So you have to either watch it through a camera, or you, or or you have to be physically standing like here. Right. Um, I think I believe it's the Gorio. I, I'm so like not at the speed. Uh, the speed. I think well, it's the that, Gorio. that's fine. I mean, just... Yeah, some evidence is a little quicker. This this one right here, this little book, same thing. Put it down, set it, and forget it. It might choose to write it. It might not. Now I will say this: on the lower difficulties, where you you will get all three evidences, mm -hmm. if if the ghost ever and this is outside of an event, outside of a hunt, outside of an event, outside of a hunt, if you see the ghost throw the book, and and then you pick it up and nothing's written in it, that means it will not give you writing. Period. Yeah. But again, remember once you get into hidden evidence, you cannot rely on that. Okay, let's talk about the parabolic mic. This is one that I'm still kind of getting used to. I usually advise, like, when you're super new, don't focus on using the parabolic mic too much because there's not a whole lot you can you, you can get from it. But there's one very, very critical piece of evidence that you can get from this uh, in zero, entity, zero, uh, uh, zero evidence, zero sanity, and that is the Banshee scream. 
because mm, okay. a, a banshee can sometimes be a little problematic to detect. The banshee has a unique response on the parabolic mic, and it, it literally sound, sounds like a scream, like Bruh! like 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 it's it, it's Ooh. it's it's really really cool when you get it, and it's really hard to get. The other thing that I will mention is it can also be useful to locate the ghost room, and I can actually have you try this right now. Because it would show some noise where the rest of the room. So here's the not. thing. So while you're doing your sweep, it's got a pretty big range. It's the range is 30 meters. So okay, so we know the ghost room is in, is over there, right? So turn it on, point it this direction, and notice when you turn and it, you find the ghost room. Notice it goes to point. Notice it'll give you a 0.5 return. If it's a miling, you will get whispers way more often with that with the parabolic mic than you will any other ghost. Okay, let's talk about the fingerprints. Yep. Fingerprints will I've appear. Yeah, fingerprints will appear on light switches, doors, and windows. It's a little different on the campsites. I think on the campsites it can appear on some of the posts, and I think there's a few there's a few like edges of tents that it can appear on. But like right here, if you were checking for fingerprints, you'd be looking here. Lady, I'm busy. How rude. Uh, again, uh, light switch, door. Windows. That's what. That's where I'd be looking. Okay. Never thought yeah. to check windows. Yep. And usually, is it usually if it interacts with something and it is a fingerprints ghost, it will leave it pretty much immediately. There is one exception. That's the obake. The obake has a chance number one to leave a six fingered handprint, which is pretty cool. And the it, the obake actually has a slight chance. I forget what it is to not leave fingerprints if it touches something. Its fingerprints will also evaporate, for lack of a better word, faster than other ghosts. EMF. Anytime the ghost does something, it will leave an EMF. Um, once upon a time... Oh, I think we just got ghost riding. Yep, that's riding. We got ghost riding. Yep, and see see how I got an EMF 2? That is a ghost interaction. I have an EMF 2 right now. If I get an mm -hmm. EMF 3, I think that's when it throws something. I forget what EMF 4 is. Again, I'm a little... I'm not fully up to speed. But EMF five is one of the evidences you can get. Right. Any time the ghost does something that would normally give an EMF reading, if it is an EMF five ghost, there will be a chance for it to give you EMF five. If you're like, I'm walking around the room, how come I'm not getting any, any EMF? Well, if the ghost isn't doing anything, you're just not going to. Let's see, like it just threw this. Watch, EMF EMF five. It's EMF five. We have an EMF five ghost. So like I just said, it threw something, I came over to check the EMF, and go figure, it's an EMF-5 ghost. How awesome is that? So that pretty much sums up what all the equipment does, right. I think. Well, that's, Do you that's, have any... Yeah, I think that's... that's any questions? That's pretty solid. No, no, I think that's pretty solid.